Well, well, well. Welcome back to Lucia Lacey's channel. How are you doing, my friend? Are you ready for a new security video? Today I'm going to hack a machine from Trey Hack Me and get the two flags, user and root. Uh, the challenge has been previously solved, but now I want to show you how. As you can see, its name is uh, Smack Roto and the machine is already turned on. We should not waste the time anymore, but dive into it. Let's go. As usual, the first step is to scan the IP we got in order to identify what ports are opened and the corresponding running services. So I will copy this IP here and I'm going to scan it with Nmap. Okay, now uh, we started Nmap, it will scan the most 1000 common ports and see what we get. Okay, it finished and we have two open ports, 22 and 80. And the corresponding services are um, SSH and HTTP. So we should have a look at this web page and see what we have there. Okay. Welcome to SMAC. This site is heavily under development. Okay. Uh, it looks a page under construction. So maybe we should start. Scanning with GoBuster to see if you can find uh, anything else uh, for the subpages. Okay, for dash URL, I will copy this. And we will use a small list for the beginning. Okay, okay we started this scan and see what you get. Okay, we already got a result. Okay, we see this slash uh, mail page, so let's access it and see what we have there. Okay, slash mail. Okay, we see a couple of posts, but also a link to download the pickup file. This pickup file is a packet capture file, and our friend Wireshark will help us analyze it. Uh, you can download it from here, but I have already previously downloaded it, so let's open it with. Uh, where shark? Okay, open. Good. If we take a look at this specific uh, packet for HTTP, we notice that um, there was a request made to this um, subdomain development.smag.thm. Also, uh, there is a username and a password in this login. We can see. You can see here. Username help desk and password change change me now. Okay, uh, another way to extract this content is like this: you go to file and then to export objects, um, and from here we go to HTTP, and we see here from packet four that we have a file login.php. This file contains the username and the password. You just click save and uh, you'll have it. Uh, you'll have it there. Good. We obtained some credentials and a new URL. It's time to access this page. I will copy the link from here. Okay. Uh, one thing, in order to make this work, you have to add in your etc host file the IP that we uh, got from TryHackMe and this link in order to make it uh, uh, accessible. So I'm going to paste and access this page. Okay. So we have the portal, the username and the password fields requested. We will copy the username from here, okay. username from here and the password from here. Copy and paste it here. Now log in. I'll save. Okay. Uh, this looks like a portal where we can where we can execute commands. And this makes me think we can use remote command execution. Let's try, I don't know, PWD and see if it's working. Okay, uh, well, we didn't get an error, but we don't see any output here. But maybe the commands are executed, just that we don't see the output. So I'm going to try to get a reverse shell. Uh, but first, I need to open a terminal and start a listener with netcat. So I'm going to use port 1234. Uh, you can use any other one that is available. And I'm going to leave this here for the moment. Uh, in order to get the reversal, I will choose a reversal for bash because 
uh, these commands that are sent to the server most probably are executed using bash and um, to get this reverse shell i'm going to access this page revshells.com so i'm going to put my ip here uh, i will blur it for security reasons okay and for port one two three four okay so i'm going to copy this copy and then close and get back to this page and as you can see the command was already there and i'm going to send this command now get let's get back to this previous open page and as as we can see we obtained a reverse show so let's see we are we okay we are www-datauser and we are located in the var www.development.mag.thm okay i will do another thing and i'm going to use this command in order to be able to clear the screen after Okay, so we can execute this. Good, we are a step closer now. Since we need to find user and root flag, we should check what users are available on this machine. Let's see. So we are going to check this file and we see one user here, Jake. And I suppose the flag is uh, in its home directory. So let's see. Home Jake. Well, we see here the user.txt file. This is what we need to find. For the moment, we cannot access it because as you can see, the file is owned both on on the rain group by Jake and for the others, uh, it doesn't have any other permissions. One thing should always be checked is the list of running cron jobs when you need to move laterally or escalate privileges. So let's see what we have there. Okay, well, we got this. It looks like a script executed by root that reads a backup for a public key and it adds it in the authorized keys files for Jake user. So basically, uh, we should check if we can edit this file. And in case we can, we will add our public key and the script will run automatically and add it in the authorized keys, fi authorized keys file for Jake. After this, we should be able to connect from our own machine with Jake user on uh, on this machine, but let's see if we can uh, edit this file. So let's see. Okay. Not backups. Jake ID RC. Dot, pub dot backup. Okay, it's owned by root, and the group is also root, but but. As you can see here in the last set, there is the write permission active. So I was right. We can edit this file and then um, add our public uh, key. And it will be when the script will be executed, it will be added in authorized keys file from Jake's home. And we will be able to connect after this. So let's take my public key. Okay, and I will add this and append it to opt that backups Jake ID RSA pub backup. 
Okay, let's see if it was executed successfully. Yes, it was. So now we should wait a bit for the script to execute. And from our uh, machine, we should be able to connect uh, to this target machine being uh, user Jake. So I'm going to clear this and I will try to connect as Jake. And let's see. I will add this. Okay, it looks like it worked. And am I? we are connected as Jake. We are in home. And if we check the list of files, we can see the user flag. So let's read it. And here it is. We are Jake and we got the user flag. We got the user flag, but we still have to find the root one. Another thing that should be checked when we want to elevate our privileges if, is if the user has pseudo permissions. Does Jake have any pseudo privileges? Let's find out. Well, Jake has interesting access. He can run apt-get with pseudo and no password. Having pseudo permissions on some things is necessary sometimes, but one must be very careful on what executables provides access because being able to run some binaries with sudo can provide you a root shell and this is what we are going to get I'm going to open this page uh, GTF bins. okay and I'm going to search our binary which is apt get okay we got it here and we're going to this sudo and I'm going to copy this command here. I will replace bin sh with bin bash, but just this is just a personal preferences. It will it will work you know, with the default value also. So I'm going to put this and just type bash and run it. Okay. And if we type who am I? Well, we are root. Now let's finish this challenge. The flag should be in roots home directory and we see here the root flag and let's get our trophy yeah we got it we have completed another challenge we started by downloading a file with credentials to which we shouldn't have access that led us to being able to execute remote commands on the server and get a shell next we performed lateral movement and connected with user Jake because we edited a file which had too many permissions. Remember, least privilege access rule. In the end, we escalated our privileges to root as a result of having pseudo access to a tricky executable. Small things taken individually and easy to not consider, but put together, they allowed us to fully compromise the server. So, take care and protect yourself and your machines. I hope this video is useful and you learned something from it. Let me know in the comments what you liked and what you didn't. And if you enjoy my content, hit the like and subscribe button. Last but not least, I want to thank you for your time and for watching my video. Until next time, bye bye!